The condition Chronomancer has been getting better and better over time as the nerfs to the class have been reverted. So if you are into doing tons of damage and locking down your targets with big combos and mesmer intricacies, then you should stick around for this video where I'll be going over how I play the condition Chronomancer, including the build, the playstyle, and some in-situation commentary. So first of all, let's go over the gear. I take mostly trailblazers, but you gotta take some rabid for a little bit of crit chance because you need to land some criticals to trigger some of your traits. So mostly trailblazers for the condition and duration of your conditions, and then go for the rune of tormenting. You get a little bit more sustain from the regeneration whenever you give torment, and your clones can also give torment so sometimes you can get a pretty high uptime on regeneration and in general torment is going to be your highest damaging condition in this build so increasing the duration of torment is going to be more powerful than pretty much anything else and then we go for a sword and torch with energy cleansing and a scepter and pistol also with energy and cleansing the traits are Dueling, Illusions, and Chronomancer. You gain Vigor whenever you crit, so that's why we want a little bit of Rabbit gear. Then Duelist Discipline is going to give some bleeding on your pistol attacks and reduce the pistol cooldowns whenever you interrupt an enemy. Then we want the Blinding Dissipation to put blindness on your F2 Shatter. And then Deceptive Evasion will give you a clone whenever you dodge. Now this is really important because Chronomancer relies on shatters to do its damage mostly. So getting those extra clone generation not only gives you the extra damage on your shatters, but also there's tons of synergies in this build like the Illusionary Reversion, which will give you more clones the more clones you shatter. And just in general, you get alacrity per shattering. So it's gonna give you more of your cooldowns back which will allow you to get more clones. So it's like a clone generating system that feeds into itself. And dodging is also pretty convenient because you've got the double energy sigil and you've got the vigor and there's some other synergies later on that we'll go over. But just know that deceptive evasion is really key to getting those three clone bursts out to do your really high burst damage combos. In Illusions, take the Torch trait, which will reduce cooldowns on Torch skills and will give you extra burning when you use those skills. So you need to kind of be in melee range to use them and you're going to be using your Torch on your sword set, so that's mostly melee anyway. So just know that you want to be in melee when you're doing your Torch skills, usually. Now, Maim the Disillusioned is your main damaging trait because this build relies mostly on shatters and all of your shatters will now torment and we have the tormenting sigil so you've got like 80 percent torment duration which means that when you're doing these huge shatter combos you can get really high amounts of torment and then we want the master of fragmentation which will improve a lot of your shatters by giving you longer continuum rift it'll give you aoe days on your f3 and it'll give you Cripple, which is a nice cover condition on your F2. In Chronomancer, you want to take Time Catches Up to give super speed to your Shattered clones. In World vs. World, people are moving all over the place and your Shatters will never catch up if they don't have this trait. So you really need this to get those clones in there to land your damage. And then we take Illusionary Reversion, which gives you an extra clone whenever you Shatter with three clones so if you shatter with three you now have one and then you only need two more clones to shatter at three again and that's really important for having enough clones to be able to use your continuum split as well because you need to use your burst while you're in continuum split but if you use your burst to get the clones to use continuum split then you've got nothing to burst in your continuum split but we'll go over that later and then finally we have chrono phantasma which will double your phantasms. I take Signet of the Aether because it triggers a healing effect whenever you summon an illusion, and Chrono Phantasma will essentially make it so that your phantasms summon 
three illusions because it summons two phantasms and then a clone and that'll give you three triggers of the healing but if you're fighting things where you can't just cast phantasms off cooldown because they're in stealth like a thief then you want to just use the active of the signet of ether and that'll also reduce the cooldown of your phantasms to give you more damage over time so you got to choose between whether you want more sustain or more damage then we take the mirror images this is a pretty good skill because it gives you an instant two clones which can be used to get your huge bursts especially in continuum split but it also is a break enemy targeting which is essentially like a 0.001 second stealth and what that means is if enemies are targeting you they stop targeting you but then they can easily retarget you if you're in the same place but if you detarget with mirror images and then blink away they might not be able to see where you went and you can easily escape then we have mantra of distraction so this is now going to daze a target but you have to cast it to get the mantra charges and casting mantra of distraction to get the charges will also reduce the cooldown of your f3 and f3 is one of your most valuable shatters besides your f2 because it will daze the target it will put slow on them and it will give torment so it essentially does damage even though it doesn't do strike damage and there's no damage packet on it so if you're in stealth you can actually use this to to shatter and it will not get you out of stealth and reveal you so we like the mantra of distraction mostly to lock down the target prevent them from healing so that you can get the kill on them and prevent them from cleansing their their conditions when you do your burst combo and then after you land your burst combo you want to use your mantra of distraction again to recharge all of your cooldowns back and mass invisibility is going to give you six seconds of stealth to 10 nearby allies and that amount of stealth is really good for disengage because usually that's long enough for you to change direction and lose whoever is chasing you so let's go over the skill priority and combos you always want to use your phantasms whenever possible if you're not saving them for a continuum split so your phantasm 5 skill and torch is a really nice daze and will give burning and confusion very high value skill to use but it's a little bit immobile because the mage stops moving before it hits so you really want to use it kind of like defensively or when someone's chasing you you'll use the mage and then you'll stand still in your sword too and evade while the mage is happening then you've got the prestige which gives you stealth and blinds so you want to use that and then kind of like use your sword three to immobilize and then you'll pop out of stealth and it gives the burning and then you can use your torch five as well and that will also give burning so those are some combos you can do with the sword now in scepter and pistol your scepter 2 is a block and the target will get five stacks of torment for a really long duration if you block an attack so this is a really powerful damaging skill if you can make sure that you actually block something with it and then you've got a little bit of confusion on the scepter 3 but it's kind of a long cast if you can afford to use up that amount of time and face them while doing it then it's always good to use if you've got nothing better to do your auto attack does give torment and the third strike will give you a clone so that's pretty important as well if you need like one more clone to get that third clone in there the pistol four is just going to shoot out some projectiles at the target and do kind of low duration bleeds but it does a decent amount of damage so it's just nice to spam this off cooldown because whenever you interrupt an enemy with either your pistol 5 which is a daze or a stun depending on how many bounces it does and your mantra of distraction and your time sync and your torch 5 there's just a lot of ways you can cc the enemy and whenever that happens and you interrupt someone it reduces the cooldown of your pistol 4 so just having it off cooldown always is going to allow you to get that value out of it being reduced in cooldown so what i like to do is i use my pistol four and five 
and then Scepter 3 while I'm kind of waiting for the Pistol 4 to kind of run its course and bait out their cooldowns. Then I want to go in with the Sword 3 and immobilize them while casting my Phantasmal Mage in melee range. And then from there you'll have two clones because you've created a clone with your Sword 3 and your Pistol 4 will finish. Then you'll dodge. It'll give you another clone and use your F2 in melee range before your dodge brings you out of range and then you'll have one clone because of illusionary reversion you'll use mirror images and immediately use time sync this will be another three clone shatter and then you'll have one clone and you can use your f1 and because your character counts as a shatter it'll be essentially a, a one clone shatter but it'll do two instances of shatter and that'll be essentially 10 shatters in one combo so that'll look kind of like this. So use the pistol skills and the scepter three. Now I'm gonna go in and immobilize with the five and I'm gonna do the combo here. And you can see I did the F2, F3, F1, and that's a lot of torment. Now you can do it the opposite way if you really wanted to from the torch to the pistol. It just depends on what the situation is. And also, you want to play around continuum shift. So essentially when you use continuum split, you can use a bunch of cooldowns and then as soon as you leave continuum split, you get them back. So you don't want to use all of your cooldowns if you're about to go into continuum split because you want to use them inside so that you can essentially double cast them. So one way that you can do a continuum split combo is you can do the torch five and the sword two sorry sword three and then dodge that'll get you to two clones and you can auto attack on your scepter and then you will have three clones and then you can do a pistol five into your continuum split use the mirror image in, into the f2 dodge f3 dodge again and then maybe leave and your dodges come back because you get endurance back when you leave you can do your pistol four and five again you can do mirror images again you can double dodge again for essentially doing all of those things that I showed outside of continuum split twice. And you can do an insane amount of damage by using the continuum split combo like that. And if you don't finish them off with that, you can use power lock to interrupt them and prevent them from using their heal skill and resustaining. And also any of the mantra charges you use in your continuum split will return so you might as well use them inside your continuum split now mesmer on paper doesn't look as good as it is in practice because it's a very high burst class and it has a lot of playmaking potential so really we got to talk about how it works in real situations so here i am capping a sentry and i've got a Sikkim soul beast coming towards me i see they have all of their bursts ready so i go into my dodge and my distortion and then i pop all of my phantasms and i can't stealth because i'm i think i'm sick here but i go into invis as soon as i'm able to and now i land my pistol five into the scepter three and i'm going to dodge into my f2 now i use my pistol four and i don't have any interrupts left because i use them all to survive their initial burst but now we can immobilize them and land our torch five on the target. So there's a lot of damage to finish off people. And you can sort of survive those initial bursts on you by just using your dodge, your evade, your scepter two block, your distortion, and then using stealth and getting the opener once you're ready to re-engage. Now normally thieves counter mesmers, so I open in this situation with my continuum split into mass invisibility which essentially gives me a double mass invisibility which prevents them from getting an extremely generous opener on me so i'm trying to kite them away from the cannon fire here i double dodge into my sword too and i try to yeah they're gonna go into dagger storm so i can't do much there and i dodge but they're in stealth now so they can abuse me i interrupt them with the day's mantra to prevent them from stealthing but they're going to go right back in. I've got all my clones up, so I'm going to use my F3 to get them off of me. I land a nice pistol 5 to burst them after their dodge. And now I go in stealth so I can land my heal without getting bursted. 
but they're doing pretty well. I did get my pistol phantasm off before they went in stealth, so that can help me to pressure them a little bit. But they're just going in stealth so much and out sustaining me. And I just used my distortion, so I've got nothing left. So I'm going to target the deer here with my phantasmal mage. And I'm going to stand on the deer so that the mage hits the thief when they jump on me. And essentially the mage is going to just CC them and destroy them with conditions to allow me to get the upper hand in that 1v1. This is a decently tanky untamed. They open with stealth so I back off and wait for the duration. I evade and then go into my stealth and then I use my sword 3 on the pet to get some preemptive clones up so I can use my distortion pretty early on here to avoid their opening burst. And now I want to use my CCs to bait out some more cooldowns because I want to land all of my burst here but they block and all of my F2 shatter gets blocked so I need to back off because I missed my burst. I go back in stealth with my torch 4 to look for another situation. I've got two clones so I can use my torch 5 into my continuum split but I don't have much else so I go for mass and viz but my continuum split ends so I don't get the value of the second cooldown. I use my torch 5 again and now we can use all of our scepter and pistol abilities. I've got clones and my mirror images so I want to go for a double shatter here with the F3 and the F2 but a lot of it gets avoided and cleansed by their heal skill so we gotta bait out more cooldowns and their elite skill has been used so now I use distort to get my mantra of distraction charges back and I'm gonna look for another burst as soon as possible I land my F2 and I get a lot of their health out of the way because they're using skills while they have confusion. They get extremely low and I'm trying to finish them off by spamming days with the mantra. And now we just need to finish them off. So I use my torch five with blink to get the burning on them and we're able to finish them off with all those conditions. So that's pretty much how you want to play the condition chronomancer for small scale worldly world. If you like this content, then like the video, subscribe for more, leave a comment down below which build you would like to see next, and if you want to support me, then check out the links below, share my content, and thank you to all of the patrons who keep my content viable, and I will see you all next time.